Good morning and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. We have from 1889, well, not this bottle, but Corbell, California, brand, introduced in 1889. All right, California Brandy, Francis Corbell, um, political refugee or escapee from Europe, <clears throat> involved in revolutionary activity in the German Confederation. Anyway, um, distilled by Corbell brother, brothers of Di Giorgio, California, but then it's blended and bottled by the same people at uh, Guerneville, California. So it's distilled in one location, shipped down to another location, blended and bottled. Corbell's famous mainly for their sparkling wines are California Champagne, but they've been making brandy all along, also brandy made from grapes. There's some others in their lineup, but let's look what they're saying in the lineup. Handcrafted in small batches. Okay, they started making it in 1889. Handcrafted in small batches at our artisan distillery using only the finest California grapes. Corbell California brandy is masterfully aged to perfection in premium barrels. Fire charred and mellowed to achieve a golden amber color. Rich butterscotch aroma and extra smooth taste. So they're owned by Brown Foreman. Okay. That's who bought Corbell years ago. So the Brown Foreman family owned company bought the family owned Corbell company. Um, so what are the bourbon barrels? Uh, could be uh, Old Forester, more than likely. Old Forester barrels, I guess, right? So, makes sense, right? Wood for Reserve. Now, there's some other ones that, want, that I'd like to try. Now, I've had the v XS. That's a that's a spiced brandy. Tanya Mikowski, I did a solo review, and then Tanya Mikowski and I did a, group, a duo review online over it because she's in California. We did personal sitting together reviews once two years ago when she visited Louisiana, but we did an online group duo uh, review of XS, the spiced California brandy. Still 80 proof though. Now there's the VSOP, Asian premium oak barrel. See, now the other one just says bourbon barrels is a premium. So maybe a higher grade, I don't know, whatever barrel. The VSOP. So that's a hot, that's a longer uh, age, usually about four years. Corbell 12. Makes sense, right? 12 years. This is going to be expensive. Appalachian oak barrels. I've never even seen it in the store. Corbell 18. Uh, French oak alambic brandy blend. Okay, I've never seen that in any store, but I may have not been looking carefully enough. Corbell 25, the oldest ultra premium brandy in Corbell's portfolio. Upper line triple effect column still. So, I mean, I would buy these down the road because they're probably fantastic. It's an old company, venerable company, right? So, but the California brandy is just the basic one. It would be VS, we would call that. But they don't call it VS. They just call it California brand. Well, I don't know why they don't use the VS designation. They just don't. I don't think there's an age statement. I could be wrong. I didn't. I put that they didn't have an age statement. They're going on handcrafted quality and all that. Uh, no. Sometimes I'll have it very small and you forget it. But I don't see that anywhere. Mm -mm. No, no age statement. It's probably about two years. If you uh, get the Johnny Walker Red Label, you'll say it's no age statement on it. But if you look carefully, it's almost a microscopic print. It says age at least 36 months. <laughs> so Blue Swift from Martell is the competitor. Here's Martell Blue Swift. Burt 
meant to say, hope you're doing well. Oh, thank you. Hope you're doing well too. Martel Blue Swift. Rain in here, says Nina Yorty. Well, we had a lot of rain yesterday and then it passed around noon or 11 and it, yeah, about noon and then it dried up. Now it's clear as a bell. Cold front came through, uh, kind of chilly, it's about 54 degrees, which is pretty cold for April 30th. So here's the, now the cap isn't staying on this too well. Something defective about that. Uh, Blue Swift, real fast. An audacious combination. Martel Blue Swift is made of cognac VSOP, then finished in bourbon barrels. So they age it in regular, probably French oak, and then they finish it maybe three months, whatever, I'm just guessing, in uh, bourbon barrels. Okay. They say the taste is a sensation of fullness and generosity. Yeah, you know how fullness and generosity taste, right? <laughs> I love reading these descriptions. They're just so full of it. Some of that stuff. Notes of ginger and candied fruit. That's a common flavor you get with these liquors, candied fruit, like the fruit cake fruit, followed by distinctive hints of toasted oak from the Kentucky bourbon casks. Who's casks? They don't say. Now, can you get much more expensive Martell? This one is about $30 a bottle, okay? 25 to 30 a bottle. Regular size. Oh, well, look. I got the VS. That's about 20, 21 a bottle. There's VSOP matured in red barrels. I haven't even seen this one before. This must be a new one. Cordon Bleu. That's an expensive one. Cordon Bleu Extra. That's going to cost you even more. The VS, why well, I said that's about 21. The EXO is going to cost a fortune. The Loire Le Jean Mortel is going to cost a, a real fortune. The VSOP, I've seen that at Dorgnax for about, oh, about 26, I don't know, $23. But I've seen it at Dorgnax. I might get it next. Then there's some different rap star versions, you know which means nothing to me because you just, it's not a different recipe. You're just getting the, some people collect that like, Oh, look, I got it with, with whoever on there. Okay. Amber color, rich butterscotch room and extra smooth taste. Okay. So if y'all have ever had either one of these, let me know. Um, I cannot get Corbell anywhere in this parish that I'm aware of. I did find the XS at an out of business. There's a lot of out of business places these days, but it was out of business before all of this um, stuff. But um, it looked like it had been set there for a long time and it had been overlooked. So I'm not aware of any Corbell sold in this parish, but I can get it in Jefferson Parish. Corbell at Dorgmax, and it was $14.99. Okay. And the, the Martel, yeah, a lot of places around here sell Martel. It's the oldest cognac house in, in the world. Uh, they're pretty popular, okay? They got some people who love Martel. Of course, you know the most popular cognac brandy, Hennessy. That's your big one. Everybody sells Hennessy, everybody. I mean, any obscure gas station is going to sell it. Because, you know, in Louisiana, we have gas stations instead of liquor stores. Convenience stores sell liquor. Okay, um... Coravassier is the second most popular cognac. You see that in many, many places, or probably most places. And then uh, Martel be number three. Uh, and then I think, well, let's see, are they number three? It's it, Then it's like a battle between Remy Martin, um, Martel, and some others. Yeah, but they're big. I mean, we're talking big, you know. But... Um, Put the Corbel Natty boat. Now this one has a little foiled top cover, cap cover. It's nice. It's got a cork too. It's not just a twist cap like that Martell. Come on. I might need to hydrate that cork a little bit. I learned my lesson <laughs> with that wild turkey. That thing was so dry rotted. Oh yeah, never mind. <laughs> 
Ha, ha, ha. It's one of those rubberized corks. Although I've seen rubber dry rod, of course, you, you get gaskets on a vehicle, car, or truck. They'll do that. They'll dry rot. you got to replace them. So I guess I shouldn't speak too soon. That's a rubber cork. All right. Mm -hmm. There's the cap. Make sure I pour it enough. Well, not really enough Martell. Blue Swift. I would have kept doing brandy and I never would have done whiskey except people kept asking for whiskey. Like I was doing brandy, brandy, brandy four years ago. All right. The main comments I would get was, when are you going to do whiskey? So I said, if you can't beat them, join them. I mean, it's not bad. Whiskey is not a bad thing. I mean, if, I'm, if people are not interested in brandy and cognac, there's no use fighting against the wave. <clears throat> So I said, I'll just do whiskey then uh, and still brandy from time to time, time to time and rum. And then when I was doing whiskey, people kept saying rum, rum, rum. Oh, no. I said, I don't want to do rum. I don't want to do rum. But then I finally did. And now I'm caught up in that. So uh, the first whiskey I reviewed was Sazerac Rye. Thank you, Sonia. That was a great one. Great rye whiskey. I have another rye in the cabinet. Very soon. Maybe today. No, not today. I can't do this. But um, next month, got to, I'm going to do the uh, Woodford Reserve Rye. Got a great deal on that. It's Savannah Discount, where else? And um, the first whiskey I reviewed, the second whiskey I ever reviewed was the Beams 8 Star, I think it was. Beams 8 Star, American Blender Whiskey. But try finding that on the site. You won't. Dram Bowie claims to have a honey note, Dram Bowie. Yeah, I've never done the liqueurs yet. So you could see that the Martell is much darker. It's like mahogany almost. And then the California brandy, the Corbell, is just regular old amber, tan, a little tan, so like leather, tobacco. Um, these have color added. Yeah, this brandy generally has caramel color added to it to make it look darker and keep the color consistent. I've seen them poured out the, the still and it'd be clear. Well, so is bourbon. Bourbon's clear as a bell before they age it in the barrels. The barrels will give us the color, the charcoal. Um, now bourbon, they cannot add color into it. If you buy straight bourbon, I say straight bourbon. It, it's all natural. So whatever color you see, that's the color it is. Maybe lighter, medium, medium range, or very dark. American blended whiskey, they can add color. Blended bourbon can add color. You said never heard of such a category. Well, it's there. It's called blended bourbon whiskey. It has to be mostly straight bourbon, but the rest can be corn spirits, just clear unaged corn liquor, which can become bourbon. You see, you see what I'm saying? Now, and they add color. They can add color and even flavorings to that, believe it or not. So it goes on and on. You can look at your Tax and Trade Bureau website. I'll tell you that. Canadian whiskey has color in it and usually, you know, I think Irish. I know Scotch does. Okay. I got to keep my eyes closed because one is so dark and one is so much light out. You say, well, you shouldn't be comparing cognac to brandy. Well, you've got to understand cognac is a type of brandy. It's simply a brandy that comes from the cognac region of France. They're not all expensive. Uh, you can get some cut rate cognac, cheapo brands. Yeah, just like anything else, get cheap bourbons, cheap scotch. So um, uh, it's just a designation and it's a legal designation. You can't have cognac in America. You could have cognac style, whatever, but it's just brandy. Right? If you ever see use French brandy, like Ciroc French brandy, like I saw at Walmart yesterday, a day before yesterday, it's brandy, but it's not cognac because it's not from that region. It could be from another part of France, could be from Brittany or Paris or Provence or whatever, wherever they're making it. Or Burgundy. 
Now that smells pretty uh, sweet, huh? Daylight's here. Oaky, sweet, spicy. You notice brandy? Be oaky, like oak wood. Sweet, like sugar. And spicy, like, well, spices. Now, if you get some really weird brandies, off-the-wall brandies, like Hartley, which I saw when Dixie has it on sale, which means it's the same price as everybody else's normal price. That's an expensive store, boy. I'll tell you, I don't know why they, I don't know where their concepts are coming from, but Ain't my problem, but Hartley, you can go to Dorgnax and not Dorgnax. Rouse's, sometimes they have it for $7.99, $6.99, actually, $6.99. That one will have a weird aroma and flavor, the Hartley VSOP. But they're flavoring it. They'll tell you it's flavored. It's like they say buttered rum cake. I was like, buttered something. Now, what, what comes from underneath? Now, when the under flavor starts coming in, the base flavor, ooh, that could be scary, but hardly must be popular because I see a lot of places selling it like madness. And I've even seen posters. I've gone into stores and seen posters and displays for it. Somebody's drinking it. Oh, uh, this one over here doesn't smell appreciably different from the other. It has a little stronger wood note, a little stronger wood note. You can see it. I can't. I got my eyes closed. I bet you that's the, um, is it darker? I bet you that's the um, Martell, but I wouldn't, I won't look. I saw Walmart yet two days ago had Saint Remy, Saint Remy, Saint Remy, uh, which is also by Remy Martin. There's a whole line. San Remy has a whole line from the basic one they got over there, the VSOP, to really expensive ones, which I think, uh, yeah, Dornax has that. All right, time to taste. Cheers to the world. A lot of grape skins, spices. Um, wax. Wax, like some kind of waxy component. Um, the candied fruit they were talking about. So that's why I like brandy more than whiskey, because whiskey, you get that bad bite from the grains and it'd be tasting like cornbread. And it's just like, oh, you know, scotch is better, a better type of whiskey, in my opinion, because you got this. It can be. Let me correct that. It can be a better type with the deep smoke and everything. I like the deep smoke. Uh, but um. Boy, oh boy, you can drink those scotches and you start thinking on it while you're drinking on it and that corn will come screaming out the back. And you say, whoa, yowza, that's 80% corn corn liquor. Ooh, ooh. But they do a good job generally masking it, you know, with the single malt scotch, the peat and the, the peat and the smoke. But these, see, the brandy has the grape base. And I don't even like fruit juice, really. Remember I said that I don't like juice? But they distill the wine. They take wine, ferment, you know, they take grapes. They ferment it, make wine, right? Then they take the wine, just like with whiskey, they take beer and distill it into whiskey. They take wine and distill it into brandy. And then they make all the different uh, variant variations of it. But to me, it just comes out nicer. That's all. Maybe the rum comes out nicer, made from molasses, a sugar byproduct. What would I rather drink, rum or whiskey? Uh, probably rather drink rum. I'm not attacking whiskey, no. Just telling you what I prefer. Yeah, this one's spicier and 
there's more candy, more candy, like um, Three Musketeers bar, the nougat, a little mild chocolate, a little rock candy. Yeah, yeah. Caramel color is classified as a carcinogen. Uh, I would not, uh, yeah, uh, don't buy into that. It depends who you're talking to. It is not going to, you got to remember, you got some of these governments, especially in Europe, more socialists, and they're very activists. And they make very definitive statements about things that are just a supposition or an opinion. You can see that in Canada, which is like a European country. It is a European country in America, basically. They'll make all kind of definitive statements on their products. I was there in that uh, in that Dominion many times, and they'll say, uh, you know, the cigarette packages are very ugly there. It shows you the ugliness of big government to deface those beautiful cigarette packages with all these ugly government declarative statements that are based on theory much more than fact. It'll say cigarettes cause cancer. I was like, that's not even proven. So that's an example of what I'm saying. So to say, well, they injected lab rats with thousands of milliliters of straight caramel color week after week and the, and the, and the rat got sick and died. Therefore, we established a correlation between caramel color and cancer, it's ridiculous because no one is injecting high doses of caramel color weekly in a, in a lab environment. You see what I'm saying? That these are not real world applications, but people take it, they run with it, put it on social media. And next thing you know, you got people running, howling around, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And then you got Newcastle Brown Ale declaring, we're no longer gonna use caramel color. Why, because they thought it was dangerous? No because they didn't want to hear people's mouth. And think about the recent stuff going on. Same thing. Hysteria based on bad theoretics. Very bad theoretics. Okay, I think this is the core bell, and I'm going to tell you why. It's got, this is going to sound bizarre, madness, Insanity, but it's got more of a California grape taste. How you describe that? Mm. I don't know. It's just something California grapes have this taste. I can't describe it. It's just, it's like a lightness to it. It's like a light oh, character or a body or something. And they got that spice. Uh, do they add spices to the Corbell? I don't think so. Are they allowed to add spices to brandy without disclosure? I think they can, though. If I if I don't, I could be wrong, yeah. But if I look at the Tax and Trade Bureau website, they show a very detailed chart of what's allowed and what isn't. I think they have to disclose it. It's optional, like... You could say it has flavoring added, like the Hartley, or you could just choose not to say it. But by golly, it sure tastes spicy, mm, unusually spicy. How could you get such spices from a grape? Mm. You say the yeast, the yeast. All right, 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 right. That's right. You can make beers taste like they're spiced with coriander and bananas, and they got no, neither of them in it. See, that's a heavy wood. You say it tastes like bourbon, huh? A little bit. You salted him a little bit. A little out of order yourself. Yeah, it tastes like bourbon a little bit. So I'm going to reveal. I think this is the, I don't know why I put tags. I, 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 why would I need tags for these? I, I'm going to say this is the, uh, the, 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 the Martell. It is the Martell, dang it. I got it. Haha, <laughs> I can tell them apart. So this Martell. Uh, cognac brandy tastes a lot like Corbell. Uh, no, they don't. They have similarities, obviously. They're cognac, uh, blah, 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 brandy, 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 about the same. No, what am I saying? 
The Blue Swift's about fifteen dollars more, at least ten dollars more a bottle, at least ten dollars more, and probably more than ten. If you only paid ten dollars more for Blue Swift, you'd be lucky. You can you can consider that a winning day, a winning day, a winning day. But you're probably going to pay more than. Is there a quality brand of American brandy? Yeah, many, many quality brands. A bottle of Christian Brothers, which doesn't dazzle me. Okay, you probably got the Christian Brothers VS, which is very basic. It's good. I like it, but it's very basic. The E&J VS is basic, even with a little bite to it. Kind of a nasty little bite, but it's good. Uh, Paul Masson VS, basic. Okay. So I would say go to the next level, the VSOP. They're aged a minimum of four years. You're going to find a lot more developed. Chris Brothers aged VSOP. The Paul Masson VSOP aged in bourbon barrels. So you're going to find it's like... A lot better. Now, if you really want to jump up, go to the XO. XO. Letter X, letter O. These are going to be much more flavorful and, and mature. It's going to cost you more. It's going to cost more. But you're going to pay more to get more, you see. So you can buy, and then you can go up the ladder. It costs you a fortune, you know. But yeah, yes, there are very many good American brandies. No doubt about it. The Christian Brothers Bottled and Bond, the Sacred Bond. I think it's fabulous, you know. All right, that's nice, sweet, candy, candy, spicy, all the things we like. If you like spicy. Have you ever tried Phillips brandy? No, I never heard of it. But there's so many brandies, you know. There's so many brandies in America. I mean, I mean, most of them are kind of cheap, like Barton. I've heard of that one. Uh, I mean, I'm not even going to name it. There's so many. There's so many. It's like mind boggling, really. Um, some are really bad as far as quality control or or, or quality on purpose because they're cut rate. Like I saw Clubhouse brandy blended with grain spirits. Great brandy blended with grain spirits. I said, that is an old bum drink. Because why would you take grape brandy and blend it with grain alcohol? What a mismatch. You say, I know why. Because it's cut rate cheap as you know what. And these guys can drink it and lay on the street. That's the only reason it exists. Or somebody is just hates to spend money, but they want to make mixed drinks, cocktails after work, and they buy the cheapest stuff they can ever find in a liquor store, and they don't care because they're not worrying about the flavor. They're going to mix it with Hawaiian Punch anyway, or Delaware Punch, and they only want the 80 proof. They only want the alcohol. They don't care about the flavor. They're going to mask it anyway. They might pour it in chocolate milk. Okay. All right, fine, but to sit and taste it, no way. Uh-uh. Can you imagine how it would taste compared to these two nice items? It would just be a tragedy, a, a real tragedy. I think, I can't say for sure, I've never had it. Maybe it's wonderful. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm sure it's wonderful because it's $5.99 a liter. Woo, yikes. Oh, well, we close this out with victory. I'm victorious today because the Martell does not taste like the Corbell. You can clearly tell one from the other. They do live up to their taste description. If you read the websites, what they say matches what you experience. And that's a good thing. Sometimes it doesn't. But these two do. Which one's better? Um, oh, well, now that's a difficult question because um, it's like a preference issue here. It's not a quality issue. I would say it's a tie on that. They're both very good. So I would, without any hesitation, recommend both. I would highly recommend Martell Blue Swift. Go out, buy some. I think you'd be very pleased with it. I do not work for the company. I do not receive money from this company. Not to say that I would turn it down. I wouldn't. But anyway, um, excellent product. Martell Blue Swift. Corbell California Brandy. Highly recommended. I'm so glad I bought it. It's been winning and winning and winning. I haven't had a bad millisecond with it.
You understand? I haven't had a scintilla of badness associated with it. I can't say I found any fault with it. Any fault. And that's a good thing. I'd like to try Phillips brandy. I have bought Phillips 66. But that's a gasoline, so. But um, I do have some albums featuring the Phillips. Um, and they're singing about, I need somebody groovy. You know, I need somebody to move me. Yeah. Move me like they should. Uh, but when I find, you know, they sing that kind of stuff. About all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray and all that. So, yeah, that's my experience. Top tier Phillips 66. Yep, that's the good brandy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. I'm going to end it. And we'll be back this evening for Thundering Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm doing another rum taste challenge. Y'all take care.